for a film about a man trying to overcome a speech impediment, the Oscar-tipped historical drama The King's Speech has really got people talking. Colin Firth plays King George VI, who's looking for a cure for his stammer. Helena Bonham Carter is his wife Elizabeth, the future Queen Mother. Yes, I went to meet them both recently, and uh, just I'll explain the situation. Yeah. Colin Firth is first in. Yes. Helen Bonham Carter. On time. Is, yeah, presumably. on time. All calm. very relaxed and yeah. calm, very chatty. Yeah. Helen Bonham Carter comes in a little later and brings with her a certain air of chaos. I'm just like, oh no, <laughs> sorry. Oh, oh, Jesus. Have you just knocked over? <laughs> you just knocked over your drink. Just as we're about to start. Uh, sorry, Colin, I'm really, really Helen, sorry. Is, is this a, is this an indication? <laughs> you can't take the Queen Mum anywhere. <laughs> is this an indication of what it was like during the the filming? Th this is the thin end of the wedge. No, really? I tried yeah. to. No, I'm really sorry, but I do drink a lot. I will say, not alcohol, but. Um, other else. things, everything mm. else, and this is a very common occurrence. So okay. Surrounded yeah. by stains, <laughs> we'll basically. Later. Yeah. Just on the, on the idea of you yeah. two working together, and mm -hmm. you obviously know each other very well. Is that helpful? We don't know each other that well. No, well, no. you do actually. No. Uh, we got to know each other reasonably well. I felt that I had met you before. Well, that's because you had. Oh yes, that's true. And, um, <laughs> But we hadn't we'd we had had dinner actually a in the few times. No, I mean we we we'd we met really. many, millions of times. Well, we and, hadn't um, acted together. No, and we no. hadn't done anything else. The reason I ask is because obviously in the film, yeah. you are the support mechanism. I am utterly. And that that was clearly. <laughs> I mean, if we can try and get to the film, that yeah. clearly is a, a huge part of the film. Relationship so relationship between the two of you, and how that works. I think that is historical. I think that uh, one of the things that is not controversial um, that our story addresses is that relationship and the fact that she was immensely supportive of him, um, uh, you know, throughout the, this entire, well, their entire lives together. From His Majesty. <laughs> But even if you leave aside the context that is the king and these speeches are so important, everyone's had a moment, haven't they? Even if they're not stammerers, where, you know, I don't know, it could be a wedding speech or it could be any kind of, you know, family occasion. I mean, most actor friends get into a similar and as much terrified state as anybody else. But and maybe, maybe because we do it more often, we're paid to get through it, you know. We've got certain mechanisms to get through it. But it, it doesn't take, I mean, he, he, he locked himself in a, in a toilet recently. For years. Um, <laughs> he's only <laughs> recently <laughs> come yeah. out. That's why it's a very bleak <laughs> period of my career. My wife and I are glad to visit this important. Take a good deep breath and up comes Her Royal Highness and slowly exhale and down comes Her Royal Highness. <sighs> All right, Bertie. It's actually quite good fun. Mother. Shorten the humming each time. Mother. Mm. Manufacturing a district. Another deep breath. And Jack and Jill. Jack and Jill. Went up the hill. Went up the hill. I just sway. Perfect. Will not permit us to... Loosen the shoulders. Ding dong bell. But she's in the well. Can I ask you about the technique? of getting over the, the stammer, because there's quite a bit of that in the film, and you have to do quite a lot of those various sort of movements with the mouth, that kind of thing. I didn't really start with technique. No, 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 no. I feel the looseness of the jaw. It is a purely a journey of the imagination, and you're on your own. You know, your director can help um, judge what's going on and how much, how little, whether he thinks it's authentic or not. Um, fortunately, I think the, the most valuable resource for, for me was, was our writer, David Seidler. Uh, now, he was the source of the material we were working with, but he was also somebody who had stammered since childhood. And he was extremely expressive of that experience. And I am I right in thinking that during the filming, you were playing a witch in Harry Potter? How did that work? <laughs> <laughs> well, it was a bit like, as long as I, I knew if I had the teeth in, then I was um, the witch. Although, actually, I did try teeth for Queen Mum, because Queen Mum didn't have good teeth. Do you remember that? Phase? I do, yeah. I tried everything, actually. I tried the lenses. I tried it with blue. We don't, obviously, we don't actually look like the people who were playing. So at the beginning, we tried everything to look, try us, you know, try and make us um, look like them. So we tried mm -hmm. blue eyes, I tried the teeth, uh, we tried, uh, we, then we just threw out nothing, the whole lot. Nothing worked. It nothing really sure worked. <laughs> and, and given how, you know, relatively recently she died. Yeah. I mean, did that play on your mind a bit? The, well, the yeah, because everyone's so, everyone, she's so imprinted on people's minds. Um, and then, um, but then like, I wasn't playing her in her latter years, although some days I felt it was. Um, so um, I had to, in a way, that was quite, it was her in, her, in the 30s. 
but you're presumably both mindful of the fact that there'll be a lot of people who remember these events actually happening in their own lifetimes and remember those speeches happening and hearing them in real time. And to whom they're important. Yeah. Um, you know, you realise that you're, you're, you're treading on, on sacred territory for some people. And uh, I would say every man, woman and child on the planet would recognise Winston Churchill by his silhouette. Mm. Um, yet somehow the man who was king during that time is probably unknown to most people of my generation, mm. let alone the next generation down. So I had a lot more room to manoeuvre. I mean, as, as Helen was saying, the Queen Mother was certainly extremely famous in her later years. Um, my character, who was somewhat consigned to the shadows, and that's one of the things that interested me, was to, to explore into those shadows and see who's there and, and see what happens if you turn mm. that person into a protagonist. And can I just ask, have you had any kind of official nod of approval or anything, no little phone calls? Well, no. But that's, that's not going to be our business. But that's not our no, business. Not it's sort of separation of church and state, if you like. I think it's probably quite healthy that we're not tied to their response and they're not tied to any sort of uh, endorsement or condemnation or distancing themselves. It's just, I think it's just better kept, um, kept discreetly, uh, you know, at a, at a safe distance. And, and one last thought about uh, the Oscars. A last thought? <laughs> it's quite a. <laughs> I think over. Heard <laughs> <laughs> They're over, darling. You didn't get it. No. <laughs> it's already been talked about. No, I'm, I'll just dodge that and go home and polish my biffer. You polish your biffer. Yeah. I think he will get one. I do think you'll get one. Bless you. Yeah. <laughs> that is a support mechanism. Yeah. No, I, I, well, he didn't mm. recognise it, but I've been so supportive of him right from the start. Thank you both very much. Thank you. It's been very tiring. <laughs> When he said he'd go home and polish his biffo, what did he mean? It's an award he already has. Oh. So he's won an award already. So it did kind of make sense. <laughs> they, they, those are two actors you could just sit and look at or talk to, I can imagine, for hours. And they just kind of banter amongst themselves. Oh, brilliant.